one of the most beautiful things in life simply because color is important for everybody. Everyone loves color. And whenever we go, everybody loves color. Why is this? Well, the most important thing to understand is that color makes our lives beautiful. And because it has always been so important, when we see color, we want to reproduce the colors in different products, in our cities, in our homes, to be able to see the colors that we love the most. Color is well-being. And don't you ever forget this. Because we have a situation and a challenge on this planet that we still insist many times to design and produce things that are not colored, that are monochromatic. And one of the things that we know today through research and science, it is that we don't feel good if we don't have colors. Color equals well-being. And this is the well-being that we want, because what happens? If we feel well, we get happy. If we're happy, we make this planet more happy. Imagine the responsibility you have as designers, as architects, or the profession you have in making sure that we have colors in our life. Because if we do, we are a happier world. Which brings us to the topic of today, color trends. Because color trends is all about understanding where we are today to be able to identify what colors are important for us to make us more happy, more meaningful, and more functional. Don't you ever forget these three things, right? I want to introduce you to the team that kicked off all of this trend research. Because every year we have this kickoff meeting where we gather some of the fantastic color trend people from this planet. In this case, we went down to Milano, that was very interesting, to the Baulab offices with Emma, Manu, and all of the Baulab team, the color material, CMF experts with their fantastic color or material library to work and have the workshop. And the rest was digital. So we have Kundai, Daikun and Weiwei from China, from Beijing, one of the leading experts in design and color in China. Laura, that has been with us for many years now as a key in, in color and material identification of trends. And we will have Montaha Hidefi from Canada that I have known for many, many, many years, the color architect, who's also the VP of color forecasting for Color and Marketing Group, which is one of these global color trend associations that we have collaborated with for many years. Fantastic association. So this is the team that began this voyage to what you will see and experience today. What is color trends? Let's talk about this a little bit. So we understand the different thing about color trends from most other trends is that color trends is basically pure psychology. Most other trends are based on innovations. So we invent something new and it becomes trendy. But all of the colors already exist. So color trends is basically understanding the psychology of people at a given time, right? So this is the most important thing. And this is why in our color trend presentations, we talk about moods, about feelings, things that affect our behavior that are relevant to the trends or the colors that we prefer, right? One of the most important things when we come to color trend forecasting is to understand where we are today. Because if we understand what is trendy today, it is much easier to understand what is coming. 
because color trend is a step-by-step -step movement, direction. If we've had a lot of colors, or been in a lot of colors around us for a long time, a spe specific area, our brain gets tired. And when our brain gets tired, we want to go to the other extreme. And to go to the other extreme, we need to go through different steps. We have followed this trend cycle, as you can see here, but our dear friend, Dr. Leonard Oberacher from, from Austria, who did this research, and it's a fantastic cycle to document. On the left-hand side, you can see the steps from the colorful phase, the darkening phase, the brownish phase, and then to the light colors, which is basically, if you look at today, the last years is what we have, what we have been through. These overlap, and you will recognize this. You see today, for example, 2021 is very brownish. I read a report from the automotive industry the other day that mentions that a lot of brownish colors, warm brownish colors are very trendy this year. Sure, it's the same for everybody because we are in this phase, even though it overlaps depending on how we work and what we work with. So we follow this cycle very carefully to understand in what direction our preferences are moving. So there are two things, because it's not the complete truth. The other thing, which is the biggest job, is to understand what external drivers influences our color choices, affects us in such a way to strengthen certain colors more than other colors. So these drivers are very important. Today, and it's very important to understand, we will talk about the global mega drivers as a cross-industrial trend forecast. This means that because the drivers are the same for everybody, but certain industries, industries perhaps are in a little st different stages in the process or in the cycle. Okay? This is important. To be able to describe the direction and the movements, to map our preferences, one of the most important things is to be able to work with NCS, the color space, the three-dimensional visual color space. If you haven't learned NCS, please take your time to do that. You can read about it for free, or you can take the e-learning, that's no problem. But it makes a huge difference in everything you do to be able to understand what you're doing, to understand the colors you are viewing and looking at, and to describe the different directions. That's the commercial break for today. Let me take you back one year in time. This is very important, and I will tell you why. One year ago, we had a presentation at Stockholm Design Week, the one that you saw before this, this session today, uh, even though without the sound, when we presented the color trends for 2021. We mentioned then a step-by-step -step movement in our moods and feelings. We talked about the 2019 color trend forecast. It was a lot about the awakening. And suddenly we realized that things, things are happening. People are waking up from having been asleep for a long period of time. Okay, 2020 forecast we suddenly become conscious, conscious about things. We woke up, we become conscious, and we said, oh, we have to do things. This is when the sustainability came to our notion and everything. 2021, and this is now in January, February, a year ago, we said that 2021 is a huge question mark. And this question mark is one of the most important things that affected our preferences in color and design. Because one of the things that we knew for sure, and this is way before COVID-19, is that 2020 would be a year that we call the tipping point. We were in a stage in our consciousness that we understood if we don't do big things in 2020, this planet may not survive. So we call this a tipping point. So all of our forecast was based on that 2020 would include huge happenings. 
that we didn't really know, but what we did know is that we wanted and we needed things to happen. In those days, the major thing that made us react and that affected us most was the climate change that everybody was talking about. And we said, if we don't do something about the climate, you know, we might not have a planet soon. So it was a big influence. A year ago, we talked about the big parallels that we already saw with the 1920s. The 2020s and the 1920s are very similar. The 1920s was a post-war period after the First World War when suddenly everything became great again. So we celebrated, it became very goldy, very black, you know, the Art Deco. If you look at the typical Miami design today, it became very pastelish. And one of the most important things is the color blocking. We, in the 1920s, we wanted to have many colors together. So in our forecast for 2021, one of the most important things was the color blocking. But it's not about one color. We needed many colors together because we needed to have the feeling, like in everything, that things happen. Things need to change. So in our design, we also needed to have things that happen. So we're not satisfied and happy with one color. We want many colors. So color blocking was the very important thing that we see a parallel with the 1920s and the 2020s. We saw the very important constellations of the pinkish and the bluish shades, preferably in this kind of more abstract patterns that has become extremely strong in 2021, right? So we had four stories and I, I want to talk about these stories because they're very relevant. Once, for, for, first of all, because 2021, these colors are very important. We have the, the first trend or the virtual relativity or the very pastelish pinkish blue constellations, once again, color blocking. We had seeds. We already saw the importance of looking at our folklore, our roots, and refer to that because we, that's the only thing we understood. And the understanding of the real thing was important. We have the, the, um, the darker shades, chromatic shades that reminded us of the mysticism because we were looking for the truth desperately, right? And we have the warm colors of honesty, the last trend story, very brownish, super important colors that have become so important today. These were the stories we set for 2021. Now, there comes COVID-19. We presented this in COVID-19. So what happened? Because many times on the planet, when big things happen, things change completely. But what we saw with COVID is not that the trends changed, but they became, they came faster, much faster than we thought, and they became extremely strong. So strong that the expressions have become extreme. And in, in, you know today in design, we strive for unique expressions. We see a lot of bold, very strange sometimes and unique expressions in our designs. So the, this is the really big thing that happened with the COVID that pushed us to make these trends stronger and faster. For 2022, we saw another thing because we are going in in 2022 and we cross our fingers and I really hope it will be a post-corona year. In 2022, we have be beaten Corona for, fi for finally, okay? Corona has taken our lives for a year, over a year, and almost two years in 2022, it has dominated our lives. To come into a normal life, what we have seen is that we have divided these things in three steps. We have to talk about the now when we still have a foot in the pandemics. And then we have the transition period after we have realized that this is over. And then we have the after. So these three 
what steps is, are very important to take into consideration. Let's look at the now. Let's look at our behavior and how that has been translated. And it has a lot to do that we have stayed at home. And we are at home and we will continue being at home, social distancing. But being that we are so much at home, there is an enormous mass meditation. We sit at home sometimes all completely by ourselves and we think and we reason. And we try to connect to the meaning of life, we try to connect to ourselves and we want to lean on science. So we have two very important factors that we consider to be our lifesavers at this moment. Is the Zen or the presence of the now, the understanding and the connection to the now and the understanding that science are is more important than ever because science is the thing that will actually save us for everything. The truth. So we have a presence in the real now through Zen and science. So we create a very simple trend number one that we call science. Now we have this mood or this feeling of still a behavior of social distancing is a continuation of the seeds so or the roots of the folklore we talked about before COVID-19. But today is when we've been forced to stay at home. We look at our local you know, the local resources, it's becoming extremely micro-local. So we work with a lot of artifacts and you know, natural materials that we have available. So a lot of wood, a lot of natural pigments, you know, the traditional pigments that we understand, that is comforting, that makes us feel at home, you know, that has always been used through centuries. Zen and science, right? So if you look at and, and remember the trend cycle, what is becoming brownish and we have been the darkening, so we are also going to the lighter shades and we need the sun and the science. We have red, green, we have the very natural pigments, typical traditional pigments that we've used for centuries that we understand and it connects to our understanding. So we have mostly hues that are yellow, red, in with green, which is a beautiful contrast. And, th and these are the color areas that we understand the most, the warm colors and the green of the nature. The constellation of nuances with the dark colors and the, and the lighter shades gives us a beautiful contrast between the two. So the constellation of these colors makes a beautiful constellation with one foot still in our behavior from this pandemic season and one step stepping out in relief and understanding that this is over, right? Then comes the transition, because now suddenly we realize, no, the pandemic is over. Wow, what is happening? This is also a step that has begun long before COVID-19. A lot of the forecasters today, we talk about from 2001, the horrible things that happened in 9-11 until today. There has been a period, and specifically for the generation who grew up in this world, where we had a lot of depressing things happening. The Generation Z is the most depressed generation ever. So long before COVID-19, there was an enormous rebellion by these young people, dynamic, who are game changers, a very active generation that are moving our world. They created something we call radical happiness. So long before COVID, there was a movement say, good, we don't deserve this. We deserve to be happy. We deserve to enjoy our lives. And then comes COVID. In all research, if you look at this research for the last thousand years of pandemics, there are certain behaviors that are crystal clear. After a pandemic, there is an explosion of our behavior, an enormous explosion of joy, happiness, boldness, right? We seek social events. We go to parties and we party a lot. We have a lot more active sex. We take much more risks. We spend more money. There is a very, very specific behavior. It's an explosion of feelings. So we have, oh, this is also pushed 
not only by the, this Generation Z, but is pushed a lot about everybody that we have been at home. We haven't been able to hug anybody. And suddenly we can hug people. We can go out and touch people. This is the same for the older people, the elderly, the younger, the middle-aged, everybody. So this explosion of happiness is something that we will experience for sure. After a long, dark and cold winter, we rebel against the darkness and celebrate our spring feelings of joy, freedom and relief. So we create spring rebels. A very important trend story that will be explosive. Because we need this. This is the time and period that if you want to create patterns, bold patterns with a lot of colors, these psychedelic effects, this is the time because we are ready for psychedelic patterns, flowers, abstract patterns, very important. But as there will be a lot of impressions, this is also, as I call this, a transition period, because these impressions will be explosive and probably will not last for long. And what we see and visualize is that the colors will not be that chromatic. They will not be extreme, but it's more the constellation of the happy spring colors that makes this, you know, this joy or this feeling or this direction of colors. Because we have left the chromatic phase. And we are not going back to the extreme chromatic colors. So as you can see, they are not extremely chromatic. They have a maximum of 50% of chromaticness. And we have the blue reds, the blue and reds. So we have a lot of contrast in the color circle. And we have quite centered picture because they're chromatic with one more pale pink color. You know, the very, very long lasting human, so important color of pink, right? So that's the spring rebels. So once this explosion has occurred, Many of us say, oh, wow, now I really want to relax. I want to take a step back. Enough with impressions now. Enough with color blocking. Enough with psychedelic patterns. Now is the time to relax and enjoy life and to be close to the real earth. Long before COVID-19, we talked about biophilia. The similar also with the 1920s, how we bring the nature into our cities because there was an extreme urbanization. What has happened with COVID is it has put an enormous stop to urbanization. And we are experiencing a completely different movement that a lot of people call urban expats, people that for the first time in their lives leave the cities and go to the nature. I had talks with Chinese people that said the young generation today for the first time leave the cities, for the first time they go to the nature. And what happens? They discover something that is absolutely extraordinary and beautiful, the nature. So a lot of people talk about the animism, the animism is the feeling, the sense of that when we see the nature, we understand that everything in the nature has a soul, has a spirit, is a living thing. And we want to be a part of this. And this might be the most important thing that will save our planet. The understanding that everything alive needs respect. Right? So animism is a big word that a lot of people talk about. And it's a story about a holistic well-being. We go to the nature to find the complete feeling of well-being after having been sealed in our homes for so long. And we have discovered nature because it's the only place where we can actually socialize and meet people outside. So the well-being, and as you know, in architecture and design, a lot of this has had influence in the way we work. So we see comfort in being in our nature. We sense that the nature also is a living being. We become one with the nature. So we call this trans story one. Has to do by using natural material. 
materials, light wood, the greenish material, ceramics, a lot of light natural materials, very important. So the colors are pale, very pale, very close to the net natural colors. We have the blues, the greens, the grays, the stone colors, the water, and the pale yellow is kind of a fading because, you know, Yale yellow has been on the agenda now. It's fading out and it's being included now in the net palette of the nature, right? And as you can see, they are all placed in the upper left corner of the nuance triangle. So they're very similar in nuance. And you have the complementary of the very green bluish color to the warmer shades grayish colors and some green colors. It's a beautiful palette that we see as extremely important. Now comes the next bold step, because now we have relaxed. We have stopped wanting all the impressions. We are close to the nature. We have reached out and understand that nature is one with us. Now for the most trendy people, it's time to take the next step into a new world. We want to begin from zero. We have now concluded after this period of time that has been quite drastic and not so positive, we said now it's over. Let's start all from the very beginning again. Let's write the new book of the world. So what do we do? We zero everything. We reset everything. We begin from the beginning. And this is a very important movement. To create the world we want to live in, we reset and start over. We begin from zero. So we create trend number four, trend story number four, zero. And as you can see, the reset means neutral. It means black and white is back. White and black is always important. But the constellation of white and black together is a very powerful manifest. And this is a very strong movement of black and white together with a spot color. And the most important and the most appreciated spot color is the reddish blue, around R, A, T, B, to B colors. It's the most comforting, it's understandable. We trust that color. So we see blue as a very important color together with black, white, gray. We see the, these different patterns, of course, connected also to the next generation of smart materials nanotechnology, light materials, metals, all of these things that are coming extremely futuristic and important. It's a bold trend. It's important. So you will see, and you already see from a lot of fashion houses that they are already launching these trends. So you will see a lot of black, white, gray, and blue coming out. And as you can see, it's very bluish. Very blue, even the neutrals are bluish. Plus the most white color, 0300 and 9000. So, ladies and gentlemen, now you have seen the four stories. And you can see the very, very clear drift away from the chromatics, becoming more and more neutral. You see in the color circle, very warm, a lot of you know, very light oranges and very blue shades, which are most important, together with the very natural or light and neutral greens, which is the most important thing for you now to take in. But keep in mind, these four stories are very different, and they are in different stages, representing very different moods or evolution. Ladies and gentlemen,